Pastor Kim, and I'd like to read a book to you again today. Tapanum's Day, A Wampanoag Indian Boy in Pilgrim Times. It's a, young, a story about a young man who wants very badly to become a warrior. And it's by Kate Waters and Russ Kendall. And he isn't chosen to become a warrior. And so he's trying really hard to understand why. And it's the journey that he's going through in his heart. And it's a wonderful story about a young boy in Pilgrim Times. Let's read together, shall we? Kui, hello. My name is Tapenam. I am Wampanoag. My people have lived on this land for all remembered time. When I was younger, strangers came from across the sea. We call them Watakonag, coat men. They set up a colony a half day's walk from here. Now they share the land with us. Today I start on a plan to become stronger and to improve my hunting. Even though I've promised myself before, this time I am serious. Yesterday I found out that the Panisog came and took away all the boys they had chosen for initiation. I was not chosen. Panisog are warriors and advisors to our sachem, our chief. They are strong and skillful, wise and kind. They choose boys who are strong in body and spirit. My friends and I all hope to be picked. I am disappointed. This year I have grown so tall and I was sure they would choose me. I wonder why they didn't. Today I will follow my plan. I will practice tracking animals, fletching my kautatash, my arrows, shooting straight and true, and learning stillness in the forest. And I will run long distances every day. This is our summer planting ground near Namaskit, where we live when the frosts come. The soil is good, and this year our corn is growing tall. The streams and fawn ponds are full of fish. Animals are plentiful in the forest. Wasuka Humaka, my mother, and my little sister, Nampaku, care for the corn. If they can keep blackbirds from eating it before it is ripe, we will have enough to last us all winter. Before the sun is up, it is quiet in our Witu, our house. I have asked my father, Wishatun, to wake me early this morning. I want him to know I am serious about training. My father hopes that I will become a great panis. It would bring great honor to our family. I prepare quietly to go hunting so I won't wake my mother and my sister. The breech clout that I tie around my waist is made of soft deer skin. I hang my stone knife around my neck. And I check that my pouch is full of nokik, ground parched corn, and I tie it around my waist. My pitan, my quiver, is new. I made it from the skin of a fox. I pick up my atomp, my bow, and open the door flap to see the day. As I set out for the forest, the sun is rising. It has not warmed the ground yet, and the birds are just beginning to sing. I say prayers to our creator, Kitan, and to the spirits of the animals. I ask for success in hunting today. Since it is the first day of my serious training plan, I'm eager to bring back a good catch to my mother. I have had nothing to eat all morning. It's best to hunt before the first meal because hunger makes a hunter more serious. But now I grow impatient. I'm too hungry to wait, so I decide to rest and have some no kick. A little bit will quickly fill my stomach. Walking through the forest, I follow the animal paths. I look for droppings as signs that animals are nearby. I listen and watch. Many times I turn my head just as a rabbit disappears under the brush. At a place where there are many of the young green plants that rabbits like, I decide to stay still and wait. 
I shoot my kalkatash, my bow, but I am always too early. I break one when it hits a tree instead of a rabbit. Perhaps I should not have eaten so soon. I need to concentrate on hunting, but I can't stop wondering why I wasn't chosen for initiation this year. I put these thoughts aside, and at last I hit a rabbit and later on a squirrel. This is a good catch for me. I walk quickly back to the Weetu, thinking of hot food. My arms and shoulders ache from drawing the atomp so many times. I give my catch to my mother. She seems pleased, even though my father has returned with a turkey. I think of how much strength it takes to shoot an animal that large. If I'm this tired after one morning, will I ever be that strong? My mother gives my father a bowl of sobaheg, a bowl of stew, and num, numkapu, and I help our, this is hard to say, kids, a bowl of stew and numpaku, and I help ourselves. Numkapu is her sister, his sister. Numpaku cocks on and on about her morning. A hundred birds came from the sky, and I shouted and stomped my feet and sang loud songs and scared them away from the corn. Numpaku. Later, my friend Nutimus comes by to go fishing. On the way to the pond, we're quiet. We don't need to speak to know what the other is feeling. Finally, Numtimus says, I am sure you would be chosen this year, Tapanam. I'm sorry. The only good thing about it is that we can be together for another year, I say. We find our mishun, our canoe, and set our lines with dried clam necks for bait. The fish are quiet today, and we're only catching small ones. Look at the hook and how it's made. Isn't that interesting? I tell Natumas about my training plan to hunt every morning and to take a long run in the afternoon. I'll never keep up with you at running, he says, but I will come hunting with you. We can practice fletching our kalkatush. Even the small fish stop biting. We pull the mishun onto the shore. It is time for my run. I ask Natumas to come too. If we practice every day, we'll be strong enough to run to the colony and back. Wouldn't you like to see what the coat men are building now? But Natumas shakes his head no. And he turns towards home. As I start to run, I see smoke in the distance. There are no planting grounds near here. Who would be making a fire in the middle of the day, I wonder. But I don't slow down, even though I sometimes feel brave and other times feel scared. I wish that Natumas was with me. The smoke is closer now. At the far end of the pond, I see the camp. Could it be the coat men? I try to approach quietly like a warrior. It is an old man making a mishun. I have seen him before. He is called Waban, and people say he knows all the wisdom of our ancestors. To be respectful, I am quiet until he sees me. Kui, Waban greets me. Kui, I say, and offer him the few fish that I have. I hope that he will let me stay with him for a while. Perhaps he will know the secrets of being chosen for initiation. Wabin sends me off to get water and more wood for his fire. He speaks of knowing my father and my mother. When he was younger, Wabin was a powerful panisse. When he asked me to stay, we cook the small fish, and then I asked him to help me practice fletching a kalquat. Fletching a kalquat, friends, is to 
put a head on an arrow and the tails. He shows me how he prepares the sinew and the glue. I watch him wrap the sinew, the sinew around the quill end of the feathers in the shaft. It takes him a long time to finish, just one calquat. See how he's putting the feathers on? And look at the head. See? Takes a long time. When it gets dark, we sit beside the water. I complain about how long it takes to prepare a kokosh. And he looks at me sternly and says, You are impatient. Wisdom of spirit and strength of body take a long time to achieve. Every small thing you learn must be learned well. Otherwise, you will have cracks like a hastily made machine. You must learn to be patient if you want to become a man. I listen to the night sounds and understand the truth of what Waban has said. I must also practice patience. After a time, we talk again, and I ask about the coat men and their visit to our place. Waban speaks of the land and the water and the many beings that inhabit them. There is enough. For all people, he says. I ask Waban if I can share his fire since I am so far from home. He welcomes me and gives me a skin. As I fall asleep, I go over the fletching in my mind. Tomorrow I will show Natumas what I've learned. I look up and see shapes in the stars, Mosque the bear and the three hunters. Waban's advice echoes in my thoughts. I say a prayer to Kichan, to ask him to help me to learn patience and to become a panisse. I am tired from hunting and fishing and thinking so much today. The warmth of the fire puts me to sleep. Waniuk, be well. That was Tapadam's day. It was quite different, wasn't it, from the Pilgrim's Day, the boy and girl. I'm so glad you joined me today. <laughs>